You were here not too long ago, and we all thought that this was your last time, and then I invited you back to, again, and you took me up on it, and you're back again. So thank you very much. Of course. I don't... I gotta tell you, I, like everybody else who's in this audience or watches at home, we don't ever want this to end. This is the best. <laughs> it's been the best experience for me. Not only just to spend time with you as a friend, but to share all of my projects and to share with, with your audience. I mean, this is a big reason why I'm still in the business today from you and all of your help. So thank you so much. Well, and you're in the business because you're brilliant. That's why you're in the business. Thank you. Um, I wanted you back again to see you without a mustache. You've shaved it since then, and now, now you're growing something else, it seems. I did have that weird little mustache for a while. For a project. It was for a movie, and then I was trying to promote the movie, and the fans of the film are really particular about having the mustache, so I needed to remind people that, yes, I do have a mustache <laughs> at certain points in the film. Right, and now you're growing something else for s another project? I, I'm just being lazy. No. Oh. Yeah. There's a, a big resurgence of, of 90s projects coming back. Really? And I'm wondering if someone offered you to possibly, um, you know, would Marky Mark make a reappearance? <laughs> Yes, under the right circumstances. Well, I don't know about that far. But for the right circumstances, and yes, for the right cause, absolutely. If there was love. a charity event... Absolutely. Would you be able to remember all the lyrics of all your songs? All my songs? No. Which, absolutely not. Which song would you remember? Uh, well, Good Vibrations is easy, because yeah. I performed it so many times. Yeah. But, um... No, you know, it's one of those things where even, like, when I'm remembering lines for a movie, I drilled them into my head for such a long time. Now, but if I just it give me a couple, two days to rehearse, and then, yes, I could get back into the swing of things. I need to just hear it and feel it. I would love to see that happen. We have to think of a charity event that we can make Marky Mark come back, because that would be amazing. <laughs> let's, let's partner up and do that together for a very worthy cause. What do I have to do with it? I, what, what, what am I doing? Well, you could sing the uh, Lolita Holloway part. You could sing the chorus. Mm. Or we could just dance and vibe out. I'll introduce you. How about that? That Even better. I'll make it happen. Have your kids ever seen you perform? Have, are they... They haven't seen me. They've seen videos of me performing, and they're mortified. <laughs> uh, anytime, like, if they see the picture with me in the underwear, oh, my God, they'd be so embarrassed. My son has just recently turned 16, let's just say that. Wow. And he, uh, he gets embarrassed by everything that I do. Even the stuff that other people think is like cool in 2022, like movies and stuff, dad's so dumb. What is dad, that's terrible. What is their favorite movie you've done? They uh, have to like something. Well, the boys actually, my, my son and my daughter went to see Uncharted, they liked it a lot. Yeah. But they were like, Dad, why didn't you play the main character? I said, I'm too old to play the main character. You, you I used to be the main yeah, character. You tried that. Yeah. Um, but, and then I, I, I showed my daughter and the kids part of a rough cut of Father Stu. It was a little much for her. She was, she was still 11 at the time. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, they're like, they were into Transformers for a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. They were dying to see Ted, but my wife wouldn't let them see it. <laughs> so they're not, they're not the, my biggest fan. Um, your daughter got a tattoo for her 18th birthday. Yeah. And I thought you taught them, you brought them with you to, to get, get my tattoos, tattoos removed. removed and yes. then she went and got a tattoo. On her 18th birthday, made me pay for it. <laughs> and I had to get the tattoo artist. And I couldn't say no. And she had the biggest <laughs> eating grin on her face. Excuse my language. But she was so excited to get it. But they're tiny. It's what like, are they? Uh, she has a little, her boyfriend wrote, I love you with like a pencil. And they copied that, and then she wrote it on him, and then she's got a little tiny fairy here on her back. But they look like they're just written in pen. So uh -huh. I, I would imagine with technology advancing and even with the way tattoo removals are now, it probably would take like five minutes to get them off as opposed to mine. It took five years. I had big, thick, dark ink everywhere. Yeah, that, I understand. I don't have any tattoos, but it takes, it's more painful to get them removed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it didn't, it, nothing worked. Yeah. Didn't discourage her at all. Wow, that's crazy. And yeah. you had to pay for it. Yeah, I had to pay. And we got to get, like, one of these high-end, like, tattoo artists who comes to your house and charges you, like, I mean, I don't know what you would even compare it to. It's like, uh, like an architect or a writer or somebody. I mean, it was, it was expensive. <laughs> and when I saw the, t yeah, when I saw the tattoo, I thought it was just a sketch of the tattoo. Uh -huh. 
You're it being, was actually, it was already done. You're being taken advantage of. It won't be the first time. Yeah, I yeah. am. So. Because it shouldn't be as expensive as an architect, I can tell well, you that. Well, but I, 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 I just tell you, try to call one of these, like, cartoon or one of these artists. I, I'm blank on the guy's name. He's going to be upset with me. But call, call one of these guys and say you want an hour or two hours of work to, mm -hmm. done at your house and see, see what they say. Somebody, Mary, Andy, somebody call right now. Let's sure. just find a price of what okay. it, just randomly, without saying who's, who's calling. Yeah. What a high-end tattoo. High-end. High-end, what just, it costs per hour right. to do a tattoo. I'll just Google high-end <laughs> right. tattoo artist. Thank you. All right. <laughs> we'll be back. That's Mark Wahlberg and Father Stu. So Father Stu is a true story uh, about a priest, and uh, you've been trying to get this made for a long time. Yeah, six years. Yeah, so tell everyone the true story. Yeah, so he was, he started out, he was a boxer. Uh, he was the oldest of two boys. The parents had lost a young child to a rare disease. They really didn't have the coping skills to deal with that kind of loss, so they kind of turned to their own uh, vices. Stu was left on his own. He became a boxer. He got hurt. He decided he was going to go to L.A. to become an actor, fell in love with the girl. She didn't want anything to do with him because she was very religious, and he said, well, I'll get baptized. I'll do anything you want. And then once he got baptized, he had an accident which then he also had a visit, and he decided not only is he going to be baptized and become a Catholic, but he was going to become a priest. And then he got diagnosed with a rare disease, but as his, spirit, his, his physicality started to deteriorate, his spirituality soared, and he touched more people in the four years of his service than the bishop who, bapt, uh, who ordained him did in his 40 years of service. So he was a very remarkable guy. He had had a lot of real-life experience, had been in a lot of trouble, and he could really communicate with people and and understand them, relate to them in a very personal way. And so uh, it's an amazing, amazing story. And here he is still to this day getting the message out there, bringing people closer together. Well, thanks to you. Yeah. Thanks to you for doing that. Um, so in this, in this film, you, uh, as you said, so it starts out where he's a boxer. Mm -hmm. um, so you're in amazing shape. I don't know if we have an image of you as, as the boxer in, in the movie, but you're in, there you are. Then you gained, what, how much did you, 30 pounds? Yeah, but we had, only had really like five weeks. For you to gain that? To put the weight on, yeah. So tell, what was your average breakfast? Oh, God. Uh, I'm still recovering from it. I had, uh, I started out with 12 eggs, 12 pieces of bacon, two bowls of white rice, a cup of olive oil, uh, two, or, two steaks, somewhere in there, and wait, then. Wait, when you say a cup of olive oil, like you would drink? I would drink the olive oil, yeah. So how long, because this is going to be maddening for women in the audience, how long did it take you to lose that? It didn't take that long. I know. <laughs> it is easier for me to lose weight instead of gaining weight, because gaining weight, it's, you're just so miserable, you're already full, and it's not like I'm eating the things that I wanted to eat. And did you still work out while you were eating like that, or you could... I did, to try to get my appetite up. So I would go in and just try to, like, lift heavy weights to... You right, know, so you wouldn't do anything cardio-wise to lose no, the weight. No. You would just do, yeah. yeah. Um, amazing. I mean, you really do commit. And as we were saying, like, you have so many different businesses, and you're so smart. You're such a good... And you sent me some of your municipal clothing. I love that apparel. I love oh, that stuff. You. So send me more. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm saying it. Um, this, is, uh, this is you advertising it, and I think it's super smart to start with the clothes off before you start talking about... <laughs> yeah. And then you put it on, you say, oh, this is what I'm advertising right here, without smart. Yeah, you got to have that first. Yeah. Because if not, if it just says municipal, they've seen it already, they kind of right. go to so the So you have to thing. start and then put it on and go, yeah. this is what I'm talking yeah. about. It gets people's attention. I'll tell it's... you what, that day I was, I was dumb enough to go up on the top of a mountain with my 16-year-old my son and all of his friends trying to keep up with them on snowboards two weeks before I'm supposed to start a movie. Thankfully, I didn't get hurt. Well, you're an athlete. You're not going to get hurt, are you? Yeah, you know what? I just felt like it was just a bad idea. And then I knew going up on the lift, I was like, why am I doing this? And they're all sitting there giggling, and they're trying to bounce the lift and everything. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't need this. <laughs> that sounds more dangerous. Yeah. Um, all right, well, I love you. Uh, well, we're, I'm not saying goodbye yet. You're still here. All right, we'll be back.